Hi, it's Faya. Welcome to another episode of Buzz Off, the Neighbours Vlog. I'm uh, really literally doing this on the road. Going to our third Neighbours related event where I'm representing Neighbours. The first was a an episode screening that BP Boxes radio station put on of her episode. The second was the Ramsey Street set tour, the Neighbours set tour. Um, and now, today, I'm going to a book reading. This is not Neighbours related, it's a bit of a stretch, but it's a book reading that Madeline West is giving at one of my local libraries. So, Madeline West, D is doing a reading of her new book, which is called Six Under Eight. This is the amount of children she has. And ironically, the event is at 6.45 p.m. on a weeknight, which is terrible time for mothers like the other neighbors girls because it's uh, dinner, bath, bedtime. So I'm flying solo. It's spring in Melbourne, it's November. But, um, oh, let me in, okay. But yesterday it was 40 degrees. Today it's 20 degrees and raining. So I'm gonna listen to Madeline read a chapter. Uh, I've brought the ceramic pig. Uh, I'm on my own, so I don't know how confident I am to just bust out the pig for photo opportunities. Um, I've met Madeline before. I used to do comedy around the same time that she was doing stand-up comedy and improvisation and so this was god 10 years ago and i've i've run into her every now and then around the traps but um it's been quite a while since i've seen her so uh i thought hey it's d week d day she um she's coming back from the dead next week on neighbors so i thought i've got to go see her in the person i owe it to the Neighbours team. Melbourne Spring. Rain. Shopping list. Fruit and veg. The fridge is full of nothing but half-eaten takeaway. House plants. House haven't been watered and are all dead. Toilet paper. Clearly we've run out there's, as there's only a ragged pile of paper napkins from all the takeaway next to each toilet. <laughs> a new dog. We can't find MJ. Seems he's done a runner or is just hiding. Fair enough. I would too. Saturday 8th of November. 12.45pm. Home! As much as I have cherished my mini break in the luxurious surrounds of the maternity ward, with its five channel entertainment system and exotic gastronomic wonders served on plastic trays at precisely 7am, 11.30am and 5pm, I'm more than ready to return home to my own bed and proximity to Tim Tams. Some husbands come home with chocolates, some come home with flowers, mine came home with a lamb called Justin. <laughs> a week ago, Justin, was a twin, so my husband is such a sucker for animals and he knew when he said to me, we've got a property in Dandenong, we've got sheep and llamas and pigs and emus. <laughs> uh, it gets better. Um, he, he, as soon as he said to me, oh, Justin was a twin and his mum rejected him, my heart broke. Oh, I can't live here for a little while. So Justin was supposed to live with us for a week, but he now wears nappies and has a harness and comes to school with me and sleeps on my bed. <laughs> Suffice to say, I've been washing all the bed living at Lyndon about six times a week, but that's another story. So anyway, talking about um, unwanted guests in the house, Wednesday, 22nd of October, I don't need that. That's making me echoey. <clears throat> I've noticed a trend in our family, but whenever I'm heavily pregnant and about to give birth, the chef, being my husband, has a brainwave that invariably requires me to do things I don't want to do. And get your mind out of the gutter, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> <clears throat> I've just received a call from the chef announcing that we will be babysitting two miniature pigs. And so my daughter's been watching my old back episodes of, from 13 years ago on Neighbours and suddenly she's quite enamoured with that character. And we now have these deep existential questions about storytelling and creating characters and all that kind of stuff. So I'm looking forward to her watching some more of my work and one day I look forward to, her, to my daughters watching and it sounds very controversial but a series I did called Satisfaction on Facts Tale which was about sex workers um, because 
that for me was a really important story to tell because we have preconceived perceptions about the sex trade and at the end of the day it's the oldest profession and women come from all walks of life and it was only through actually researching these women and understanding where they came from and where there was damage and where there was actually offering a service from a place of kindness. I finished the event. She was amazing. She's so great. Got the book. I'm going to give it away to someone for the podcast. The current, the return of Dee from 13 years bobbing about in the Pacific Ocean is thrilling. It is quintessential neighbours, but it's given us an opportunity. The storyline is so deep, so textured, so convoluted that it's given all of us an opportunity to play these huge dramatic tropes that you would not usually see on a 6.30 time slot. You'll be thrilled, you'll be surprised, you'll cry, you'll laugh, you'll fall in love with Tony all over again. That's all I can say. Did you have any crackpot theories of what you thought happened to her? I thought that she'd been stolen by aliens. No, not really. I thought she'd been cryogenically frozen. No, not really. I no, thought really, she'd moved to America and had her own chat show. No, not really. I didn't have any theories. I had put Dee to bed and the team out at Neighbours had been approaching me over seven years to make a big return. I was always pregnant, having a child or filming something else, so the time was never right. But. I would like, to, I'm moving forward into the future, I want to direct, produce and write for film and television. And next year I'll be doing that out at Neighbours, looking forward to that. But with that came an opportunity to get one last look at Dee. Or is it one last? Or is she gonna come back for even longer? Who knows? But it's, it's been a great opportunity. I've so enjoyed being out there and you're gonna love the storyline. Well, I keep saying that was a treat, but every time I do something like this, but it was a treat. She speaks so earnestly and she gives such great advice and good, um, you know, just life philosophies. So I didn't take a photo with the pig because it just didn't, the moment didn't feel right. But um, yeah, all right, it's dark now, gotta go. So this has been another edition of Buzz Off and subscribe to the Neighbours podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or uh, jump on our website if you want to leave us a comment as well, neighbourspod.com. <laughs>